Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board, uh, Board of Health meeting of September 11th, 2019 at uh, 6.05 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Office's main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, I'd like to open the meeting. I'd like to start with a, a moment of silence for September 11th. So take a moment, think of those we lost. Thank you. Hard to believe it's been 18 years since that day. People going to war today weren't born at the time. It's just... Um, you can enlist in the military and you wouldn't even have been born now. Yeah, no, but it still feels like yesterday to me. I know. So, um, I was picking apples at Tom's place. So, um, let's see, we'll start uh, tonight with a uh, approval of minutes from previous meetings, which would be August 14, 2019. Take a motion to approve those. Or um, any I'll changes? make a motion to approve those as presented. We have a second. Um, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, let's see, we have a couple of Board of Health uh, reports and announcements. Um, we have uh, building community immunity. Um, come to your local flu clinic. So we'll be starting our well, this is our annual flu, flu clinic that we do um, Tuesday, October 15th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the South County Senior Center, and then Saturday, October 26th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 12. the Deerfield. Oh, excuse me, to 12 p.m. at the Deerfield Town offices. Again, that's 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Deerfield Town offices on Saturday the 26th and typically yeah. you bring your insurance card um, zoom in on that so bring yeah. your insurance card um, fee of no insurance is $20 for adults and $10 for kids in, they have injectable or missed uh, regular or high dose formulas available for those over six over age 65 so um, please come out and get uh, get your flu shot so we have a Scheduled hearing at 6.15, but we have a little bit of time before that. So um, I was wondering if we would wanted to uh, address the one-day liquor license, because those would be fairly quick. Um, uh, can I just make a couple of Do you want to make some announcements first? Yeah. Okay, please, go ahead. Actually, um, because uh, we had originally scheduled our tick night on September 23rd, um, because of a conflict where the selectmen are, need to go um, to another event, we are moving the tick night till October 1st. UMass um, um, lab people are willing to come October 1st at 6 p.m. here. That's Tuesday, October 1st. Um, and the reason why it's so important, they, they, in the summer, they might have three or 400, 500 tick tests a week that they um, process. In October and November, it goes, it jumps up to 3,000 or more a week. So. It's, it's a huge uptick. Um, the ticks are getting ready for winter, and so it's good to hear about what's happening, trending, where we're, where we're at locally, and what you need to do to protect yourself, okay? Sure. So please come. And then October 2nd, the next night, is our um, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness and Hazardous Mitigation Meeting. And we are going, getting ready for the next round which is Kelleher Drive, the replacement of the Kelleher Drive um, culvert. So people on Kelleher Drive and Bloody Brook, along Bloody Brook on North Main Street, please, please come so you can sign in and complain about the flooding in the area and what happens in generally in that area. Um, but Eastern Ave, Grave Street, please come um, and, uh, and sign in. Even if you don't stay, you can complain. We're willing to take complaints. This is the <laughs> opportunity to complain. We need to document the complaints. So please come in so that we have the opportunity maybe to get more money. Thank you. Well, I guess with a short time, I'll continue with a few um, comments and announcements. I just wanted to thank uh, first the election staff and the staff here at the office for running a wonderful election on Monday. 
which I'm happy to report was in the positive for our sewer project. Um, I was really pleased to, Diana, I think let um, USDA know of the positive vote so we can get moving in that direction. Um, so really happy that everybody turned out. It was a huge turnout. We had uh, 1,025 people show up and uh, had a really nice, nice vote there. So thank you for everyone that got out the vote and especially all the town staff and the volunteers that came to help you know, with the election. It was, a, it was a lot of people and busy all day. So thank you for that. Um, I'll make one other uh, announcement here. Um, uh, this is just a reminder to the area public. There will be a rain or shine under the tent World War II commemoration event uh, surrounding the 75th anniversary of Operation Market Garden just one week from today on Wednesday, September 18th, starting at 3 p.m., 3.30 p.m. Current weather forecasts call for a dry, warm September day. The location is 373 Greenfield Road, that's routes five and 10, at Child's Cross Road in the Wapping section of Deerfield. Guests are encouraged to arrive during the 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. beverage hour to park and be seated by 4.30 p.m. The formal program runs from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., with the featured speaker being the orig an original 82nd Airborne Division paratrooper from World War II. At 5.30 p.m., there will be a social hour with complimentary hot and cold food and beverages, allowing guests to meet and greet time with all veterans. Again, that's Wednesday, September 18th. Uh, for more information, you can contact Chris Harris at area code 310-729-2745. And we hope to have a nice turnout. We'd love to have you come out and support this great event. Um, did, did yeah, well, uh, the t at the Tilton Library, there's um, climate change activity um, um, speak, speech at uh, September 26th. And then September 28th is the Frontier Environmental Initiative. Um, it's actually Frontier Kids here um, in the town hall at 9 a.m. So um, really we're trying to uh, work on Deerfield 2030 and being more resilient and um, deal with climate change as a community. And um, so participating and encouraging our young people would, and so I'm hoping people will attend for their sake. Great. Um, I think it's wonderful that they're interested and they're trying to do stuff. So, so uh, this would be a Deerfield Recreation uh, pre-K soccer program announcement. Um, this program will teach the basics of soccer, kicking, dribbling, tapping, throwing, running, throw drills and, and games. Um, children will be taught coaches and teams, um, taught by coaches and teams from Deerfield Academy by using step-by-step -step approach that builds confidence and builds self-esteem and makes sports fun. Uh, a parent must attend every session with their child. Uh, participants will receive one soccer ball and shin guards. Also, please wear sneakers and bring a water bottle with you to each session. This is for three and four year olds and their parents, Deerfield residents only. 15 slots are available on a first come basis. Uh, when? It's Monday, September 16th through October 7th. It's four weeks. The time is 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And at the old Deerfield baseball fields on routes five and 10. The cost is $40, um, make check payable to Town of Deerfield, and registration would be to call the Recreational Department at 665-1400, uh, extension 107, or you can email uh, Sue Antonellis at, at the town, um, and registration forms are online at, at um, www.deerfieldma.us. And you must pre-register for the program, so please sign up the little ones for that. Um, we're close enough. So I'm going to... While, while Yap is coming up, I just want to mention, please be very um, vigilant about wearing long sleeves and uh, limiting your activity at dawn and dusk when the mosquitoes are out. There, there's nothing, nothing is popping up in our tests here in town, but there is so much Triple E around us that um, I'm really nervous about it. Um, that we're maybe not, when it gets, it's warm today, but it has been chilly. And the problem is when it's chilly, the, the mosquitoes go into the traps mostly at dawn and dusk, and so you have lower activity when it's chilly. So I'm not sure if we have really accurate testing mm. and trapping. And so, because um, the numbers are really, really down, very much down compared to what we've had in the past. So 
just make sure you use bug repellent if you're out and be vigilant about protecting yourself with, against the mosquitoes. Yep, serious business can. right now. Kids, it are, is. kids are ill and elderly, so please definitely protect yourself. Okay, so um, I'll read this notice. So Deerfield Select Board, notice of public hearing, Mass General Law, Chapter 148, Section 13. The Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing to consider an application for a license pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 148, Section 13, made by Molinar LLC to store 16,000 gallons of propane gas on property located at 4 Wells Crossroad, Assessors Map 86, Lot 5 in Deerfield. The hearing will be held on September 11, 2019 at 6.15 p.m. in the main meeting room of the Town Hall located at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Um, a copy of the license application has been available for inspection weekdays at the office here at the Select Board, um, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, during re regular business hours. So um, would you like to come on up and start the meeting, start the hearing? Come on up, join us. So um, again, this is for storage of 16,000 16, gallons of propane. Uh, gas on the property. This is the new new area you're working on, right? So it, it's new, Correct. new lot. Yep. Yep. So, and I know that um, uh, I got a note from that Darren Melnick, the Deerfield Fire Chief, called. Uh, he was unable unable to attend tonight's um, fuel storage hearing, but wanted to the select board to know that uh, Pioneer Gardens um, Molinar LLC um, has satisfied all the requirements of the Deerfield Fire Department. So. Thank you. Um, yep. Uh, that was going to be my one question. Yep, he has. Um, Did they actually sign off on it? Or let me take a peek here. Not yet. Oh, okay. But he did call in. He so did call in, so I think he yeah. would he would stop okay. in and sign off. Um, it looks like all the butters are out. Is there, um, does anybody on the board have any questions on this project? Let me just look at the site. Um, Yap, why don't you tell us what you're doing? Um, and how this is going to affect your operation, or why well, it's needful? Yeah, at the uh, previous location, we had um, access to natural gas. And now with the moratorium, that's not there. So there's limited yes. choices of, of heating sources at that point. It's either propane or wood pellets or fuel, uh, or, you know, oil. And this is the more economic and clean way to do it. Okay. So. That's why we opted for that. And these will be stored kind of, uh, looks like behind the building that is there and before your greenhouses, is that right? Correct. Heading yeah. north, yep. Yeah. Um, so how, is it one tank? No, you no, have multiple tanks. Four, looks like four tanks, right? Is there four? Yeah. Yep, four yeah. 1990s, 1990 gallons. So okay. total a little under 8,000. Yep, okay. So is there four tanks or eight tanks? Yeah. Four tanks. We typically, when we apply for the license, we apply so there's room for expansion. I see. Okay. It still has to go through if we, the license to store would be for 16. We're proposing to install eight, but if we ever wanted to do another installation, we still have to go back to Darren and the fire department to apply for another permit. But this way, there gives some room for expansion under the license to store. And the tanks would then just be next to it? It could be next to it or in a different location on the property. I see. You want to see anything? Yeah, well, it's just, you know. I'm just, yeah. if it's going to be a different location on the property, I assume Darren would have to approve it before they're put there, right? Yep. Right, yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Notice this one out. Any? Is there any questions from the public? Any the butters have any questions that are here in the audience? Please come up. You can come up to the table or to the mic and just state your name and, and any questions you might have. Whatever's easiest for you. You can come up to the table too if you'd like. My name is Jean Turner. I live across the street from this operation okay. and. Um, I don't mind it at all, but I am concerned about the propane gas. Can you tell me exactly 
where it will be housed. Mm -hmm. what, why don't you yeah, come up? Yeah, come on up. We map. can show you the map. Um, this is kind of a bird's eye view of it, so you can kind of get it. This is all new to me. Sure. Yeah, we can help you with that. I sure. just figured out how to fold it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is five and ten heading up towards Richardson's Candy Kitchen, and this is Wells Cross heading down toward the yeah, river. Right here. And you're over here. Okay, that's your spot there. So. These are the new greenhouses that have gone in, and this, I think, is an existing house or structure right. there. Right, Helen. Helen, yes, yep. in the back of Helen's house. Right in the back right. of Helen's house. There'll be four tanks right there. Now, they may add in the future four more, or they may put them in a different spot on the property, but right now, this is all they're going to be putting in. Four 2,000 gallon, roughly yeah. 2,000 gallon Roughly 2,000, yeah. But on, on the ground. Not Underground. Slightly or anything. No, oh, it's on the ground, so the we'll landscape oh, yeah, over so and around it. Yeah. They'll just be buried. Can you tell me what's going to happen to the house? We'll uh, restore it and make it livable space again. Oh, nice. Livable? Yep. Good. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful house. Or it has the potential to be a beautiful house. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, now i got to figure out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the middle. All right. There we go. Yeah. Was there any other questions? Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Well, um, if there are no other questions, I'll take a motion to close the hearing. Oh, no. the fees are in order, Diana, I'm yes. sure. Yep, yes. okay, great. So. I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, so um, I would take a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, I think we have to sign. Yeah, something we'll there. sign, and then I think um, Darren will have to come in and sign as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So I will. Okay. Uh, have you got a? And then the, uh, of course, the plumbing inspector will have to do his thing. Yep. Yeah. Do you have a spot for us to sign that? I don't, think I I don't know if there is on that application. There may I think not it's be. just the fire chief that signs, fire but chief you signs. have to yeah, have I didn't the, see anything. You have to hold the, the hearing. Yeah, hearing, but I don't see anywhere that we would sign. We would right. just approve. But mm -hmm. uh, application would be just for the fire department use only. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Good. Great. Thank you for coming. Have, have a great night. night. There should be a place on the license, I think. Yeah, I don't know. That's just the application. Yeah, right. The license. So maybe once you right. yeah, so get when that we together, you'll get that to us to sign. We are approving the license, and okay. they'll sign it. Yep. Okay. And we just ask that you secure all necessary permits yep. to, to build on the land and work with our building department to, to do so. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all very much. Have a nice evening. Thank you for coming. Um, Dick is here, so we could do Dick if you want. Okay. Um, that's just fine, Matt. Because we're just going to recommend it to the attorney. Yeah. Where am I finding it's that? under new business. Oh, under new. Thank you. Yep. So under new business, um, we're going to uh, request to discuss the marijuana zoning. And attorney Richard Evans is here. If you come up and chat, you were. Um, I know that we just kind of back up a little bit. We, you know, we have approved our marijuana zoning, not this last meeting, but the meeting before. Um, and there were some areas of um, concern I had that I wanted to, you know, have a look at and change, and then. Um, some other things that have come up as far as uh, one, one outfit wanted to maybe um, manufacture in the same place that he's producing. Um, and it seemed pretty simple process to, it's mainly just packaging the material instead of, and I don't think that was authorized under the first zoning, so we were looking at maybe adjusting that. Um, and then the other thing that I had a concern with was the space between um, uh, retail establishments and you know in our in our bylaws it talked about you know it had to be no more than five thousand you know no closer than five thousand feet two thousand feet between each other so um and you know with the, with the with the section of land that that deerfield has narrowed in for our only um retail establishment um 
there's another town right next door and there may be a possibility at some point of a, of a marijuana dispensary going in there. So um, I wanted to correct our zoning to make sure that it was clear that um, we wouldn't have another um, retail establishment or dispensary within 2,000 feet of Deerfield property. So it was just, you know, just to Deerfield. So it didn't really matter what happened in any other town, but it was had to do with our, our town and how close these were in, in our Providence. So, and I think you, you were, um, well, I just want, and I also wanted to clarify that, um, we were continuing the moratorium on social consumption establishments. I Correct. Mean, that has been my effort from the beginning. Yeah, and, I agree and that with that. It's clarified in here too, as well. So thank you. So I think um, you, um, Dick had looked these over a little bit and, um, I think made a couple of the changes that we were thinking of and then we would then send this on to our town council to look over as well um, but I think today we we're just going to talk about this and see if there were any other changes that want to be made or any discussion on on that item at all so do you have anything you want to well add? thank you very much I, I'm Richard Evans I'm a lawyer in uh, Northampton and uh, I'm here actually I represent Sons Mass Inc who uh, applied for and obtained a special permit for cultivation at the uh, Pioneer Garden site on Mill Village Road. It was a yep. long, arduous process. Yes, it was. Um, since then, my client has raised the prospect of doing product preparation or manufacture, which I, a word I don't particularly like, but, right. but that's the term in the, uh, in the statute, uh, for which I take some blame because I was on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> um, and um, but but uh, but as as uh, Carolyn mentioned, it, it's not uh, product manufacturer is simply it's, not it's allowed really in that district. So I considered proposing a tweak to the zoning law to allow it. But in further discussions with a number of people, I know and and in my experience of having gone through that long arduous process uh, with the planning board, not only with the special permit process, but also I was here for most of the hearings when they drafted the bylaw in the first place. So. It's a familiar room for me. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, uh, so it seemed to me that it would make sense, and this is a wild and crazy idea, but it would make <laughs> sense if we did this in an open and transparent way to rewrite the whole bylaw and, and, and combine the two sections, medical and non-medical, into one, simplify it, make the, the, tweak the thing about the uh, manufacturer, make the change about the retail 2,000 foot buffer. Yep. And there's a couple of all uh, odds and ends in there that, that I thought could clean it up and, and, yeah. and help it out a lot. I'm not trying to pull one over on the table, um, nope. but I'm trying to be helpful here. Yes. And so I have, as you see, I've drafted this new bylaw and I'd, I'd like to ask you to toss the one that you have there and let oh, me give you, have, you a, oh, I have an updated draft. Great. Oh no, this we'll is this. actually the updated oh, well, one. Well, we'll take another oh, one. Okay, this, this is sure. even further updated. This, oh, this oh, one has, okay enjoyed the scrutiny of uh, some uh, Boston lawyers. <laughs> so there's five copies of it. Oh, oh, oh and, and, yeah, well, then we better. And uh, so my idea, and I know it's crazy, but my idea is to come back in two weeks, and hopefully after this has been circulated widely and everybody's had a chance to comment and weigh in on it, I would come back in two weeks and formally submit it to the select board. Great and ask you to refer it to the planning board for a public hearing, et cetera, et cetera, and then it goes to a town meeting. Here's five copies of the summary as well. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be excellent. Okay. You pass those out too. So it would be fabulous if you would refer this to town council and get him to, uh, to yes. weigh in on it. Oh, that's great. And um, gosh, uh, I, I could go over it, but you've, you've seen these drafts. Yeah, and, we read uh, the, we actually, well, I read the second version, so this is the third version. It's but. not that much different, but just okay. the numbers change. I mean, the p paragraph numbers have changed because there already was a section five, and so we now have a new section 46, 70 or something. Right. Speaks for itself, so I won't take any more of your time here. I'll just no, thank you great. very much. Yeah, I, thank you for the help. Sure. Thank you very much for the help, well, um, Dick. I appreciate it because um, we were concerned 
about um, our bylaw not being clear on the distances between establishments. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is this draft. And I, and I wanted to make sure that we were clear that we were prohibiting social consumption establishments. It made and sense. To without, without question. And then the manufacturing parts made sense to kind of keep it all in one spot instead. Of, I mean, manufacturing, it sounds like you're producing something, you're packaging, really. And... Um, Moving it. it. Well, I think, making I things. Made, yeah, you know. right. Yeah. But it made no sense to kind of move that um, to another, to another location. location and then... Um, I, I actually the, think it would be more it'd security be, it'd be, It's all secure at and, that and, site already. And damaging of the product. So, unless I'm missing something and someone else will educate me, but yeah, it seems I don't pretty... think you are. But I'll be open, open to hear. Okay. But I think... Um, okay. Yeah. So for the next, I would please, I would ask you to circulate this as widely as you yep. can. Get everybody's, now the planning board, I haven't approached them formally. I think they know I'm doing this, but if you want to. No, we're, we will sponsor yeah. it. Um, it's fine, because we, we wanted to make sure the change happened on the distances. Great, but if you want to get their input in the next two weeks, yes. that's great too. Okay, great. Um, and I will monitor this. I'll keep the, the, the main copy on my computer and make changes and. Corrections okay. as they come in, and, and uh, I hope two weeks from now I'll present you with a final, final version and um, formally. Okay, now by changing the bylaws or zoning, do you anticipate, because the state has been so bad at all this since it started, that it's going to put them into a tailspin and delay things even further? Not at all. No. No, there's really the only substantive, there are very few substantive changes in this. I know, but you, you know, you've worked with the Commonwealth. Before, it's not going to mess assume. up the licensing, is it? No, I don't see that. No. Just, okay. you know. It's not I changing mean, anybody's rights, it's expanding the rights with regard to manufacturing, but not curbing anyone's rights. It's so. not changing the district, because the overlay district is the same district. Correct. It's just eliminating the. I mean, narrowing the definition of distances between establishments is in Deerfield only. It, yes. So, I mean, I think most of this is just not, is not, is very minor. I know, but it's just, he has th there's yeah, been just it's some minor point. things. And I mean, Deerfield's been trying to get something in here for over five years since the law was mm -hmm. and passed. <laughs> And we tried to be cutting edge. We, and you know, it just we went to one delay right after another, and every time something little changed, they kept on. This, the Commonwealth just kept on changing things, and delaying and delaying and delaying. And we were one of the first, probably, in Franklin County. Now we're pretty close to the last. Well, you were the first, one of the first to pass a medical bylaw, and then you passed a non-medical bylaw. You were very prompt have, on that. Still we have still nothing. don't have yeah. anything. Sorry. Still have we nothing. We still have no money. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oh, Evans, oh. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Michael Pinsky, Assistant Town Administrator. I'm Hello, nice guy. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. The abutting distances doesn't apply to uh, the bordering communicate, uh, the, communities. That's right. So that the new draft says shall be 2,000 feet from another retail in the town of Deerfield. So, for instance, the Sugarloaf shops that are vacant now in right. Waitley, you could have a, an abutting use right, right next door. Right. Yes. Under yes, our current by bylaws, we you can't could. have a, a retail establishment in Deerfield, though, because it says 2,000 feet. So under this change, it only applies to De in Deerfield. Got it. Yep. And, that, that's and that's what we're change. changing. Okay. So that whoever, if, if in fact they have a retail sh shop there, that will not prohibit activity in Deerfield. Good. Thank you. Yep. Is there a reason why you put the five acres in? Well, I was trying to distinguish between the Pioneer Garden site and other sites. There may be some small cultivation sites, five, and the five, five acres, acres seem like a reasonable... Five acres is a definition for most... Um, I know, I'm just... Yeah. Just yeah. one of... Just a way know, of distinguishing because, large from small. It's yeah. sort of arbitrary. I think we used five acres to begin with in our, so. in our original definition. Yeah. So I've got some more copies, but you've got, I just gave you five. And yeah. Yeah, yeah no, good. this is fine. Okay, Thank you. Good. Thank you. And, and Thank I, you. I, I'll, I'll set you an electronic version, I think. So. Oh, that'd be great. Thank yes. you for circulating it. I'll see you sure. in two weeks, and I hope to be getting some feedback between now and then. Great. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you Dick. I just have to look at this. So do you want to... 
uh, go through the rest of this meeting and then do it, um, you know, the other easy things and then do a executive session? I think it's pretty easy. I think it's pretty with, easy. With these few? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I mean, this will be pretty fast. Um, the only thing I, I, I did want to bring up on the, as a discussion item, um, you had brought up that um, it was wonderful that we had so much turnout and support for the sewer. And um, so kind of like next steps, I just, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to ask Mike to do, but I, I wanted to make sure that you all um, agree with this is, you know, we ha we've had multiple studies and of course we had Dave Prickett do a thing. So it's defined the problem but um, so now we got to define a solution, and um, so I was hoping that Mike would have would um, be able to dig out the old garage RFP and um, use that as the RFP to design um, an RFP to go out to bid. Because for say it's a 19 million dollar project, you're talking at least a million dollars in design work, and um, you know there's two processes. You have the you know the qualification side and the um, you know, then the pricing. And I, and I wanted to make sure in the qualification side that we added something about the company's uh, uh, lit liquidation condition or, you know, financial stability of it. Because what happened when we did the garage, I mean, that was a wonderful process. Bruce Hunter did it. Um, you know, the RFP was a really good RFP. We interviewed all these engineering firms. We, we got a really good engineer. And um, then the economy crashed, he left, and we got stuck with someone that was very unqualified, um, newbie, and then the, the owner was having well, a meltdown, and he came, and he was screaming and yelling at the garage committee half the time. He was terrible. Uh, and we had a real struggle to finish the garage. I mean, fortunately, well, we had Dick and Kevin, and, um, and then, you know, the roof was similar. We had, a, and we had a good contractor, and we had a good contractor for the roof, but we had horrible design people, and so. So before we do that, I would like to have a meeting with. Um, I want to invite um, USDA here to oh, okay. talk to us and um, to explain the process going forward. We do not have to select another engineer. It may be the choice of this board that wants to do that. I'm not in favor of that, but. Um, I do think the board needs to hear from USDA and what the implications are of that and wh how, how that will hold up the project and um, that it's not in the favor of USDA to do that. So, um, No, we again, can, but maybe in the meantime, Mike could pull out that RFP and... He could look at it, sure. Yeah, but try I'd to like track to it down. The Rebecca process here. of setting up that meeting, yeah. Yeah. have Rebecca come and out, then, and um, that's like the first step in getting going. And Correct. Um, to have her educate us on their process and how that goes forward and then what you know, and then we can decide whether you want to go that route or not. I think a lot of the stuff would, would comes out in the qualifications. Trevor. If you need to. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to is what I'm no, saying. No, I know, the, but the issue, I'm not I sure think you need to. We, you really should have the meeting you with really need Rebecca. To because basically at the USDA meeting we had with her, I mean, she indicated that we would not be able to continue with USDA if we... Um, you know, changed course that dramatically. So we should just have her say that to you and publicly explain and that. that so you can understand before we okay. start doing well, that. Well, I, I feel like we need to make sure that we have um, a good process. So whatever. Well, if that, you can pull out the RFP and we can look at it and, you know, have some input onto it and move on this. I, I want to make sure we're moving on this quickly. Right, and no, I think the uh, first step is to listen to USDA and have them okay. come in and talk to us. I think All right, it's very we can have a meeting and we have an open so. meeting, but I want to make sure we're, we're looking for that. Okay, the, uh, and staying with that, I would like to make a recommendation that we start forming the committee now Mm -hmm. and maybe have Michael put together a proposal of who should be on the committee mm -hmm. uh, so that we can start getting. And I'm actually a firm believer of seeing if we can solicit something from some of the people that were actually against the system mm -hmm. to be part of the committee, uh, just to make sure that we're getting both sides and so they completely understand what's happening. Um, and not so, 
as a board being accused that we're doing everything in a vacuum mm -hmm. because that's not our intent. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm open to that too. I, I'm looking for, for feedback and help as we go through this process as long as it's um, in a process going forward and yeah. not looking backwards. Well, I don't want to be yeah. moving backwards any Correct. longer because this has been, that, this has been dragging for a long time and it's just, right. yeah. um, and, and you know, this, you know, my understanding is, you know, we're talking about the $13 million project, of, and they've already, uh, USDA has already carved a half a million off that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's things that, you know, we've got to bring to light and uh, just let people know that we're going to be doing the best we can uh, financially and economically and smartly for the town. Correct. Well, m Not just cheap. What I wanted exactly. to make sure is that we were doing the timeline. We had a timeline um, on how we were going to do certain parts of it because that's how you're going to break out and look for other money, you know, as we go down, you know, the time. So I wanted to, to kind of make sure we had an inspection, guaranteed inspections for sure because, I, you know, I just don't trust anybody. But, you know, the okay. thing is you want to make sure that we had a, the ability to hustle, you know, say the economy crashes again. In 2008, we were, we were unable to take care, participate in any of the federal programs because we had no shovel-ready projects. Mm -hmm. The intention here, we're rushing to have Kelleher Drive ready, we're, you know, we have, we'll have the sewer treatment plant parts ready so that if, you know, something happens and there's money available, we can just send in our application and we, you know, we'll get that money. We, yeah. we need to well, luckily position. We have, we have, we have right. money coming, so I want to take well, advantage right. of that. Oh, I know. I don't want to so lose that I money. I think the most important thing is to list, have, have Rebecca come in with, okay. with no, the that's engineers fine. and the schedule and how they've got, they do this a ton and it, it was pretty well, eye-opening when I listened to them. Yeah, and, but if you want Dave and I to sign off on it, of I think we need to have that meeting so I that we feel comfortable. Absolutely. And so um, that's that's my goal is to get that here so you you can hear what we've okay. all heard, and then you can decide how you okay. Because there's, there is potential for another USDA grant for the other six million. If, if yeah, she said if we're a good partner, yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's what that's well, what no, I'm that's, for. And and and, so. and Trevor, I totally get that. Yeah. Okay? I totally get that, but I just want us in a position so that we can access more money as we go along. And then the other, the other thing I wanted us to start looking at is the realistic, now that, you know, once, as we move along and we have the, you know, the, the loan and the grant, I, I want to make sure the rates are reflective of the true operation because, you know, our operational costs are going to go down as we repair things. Yeah. So we want to be able to have our rate structure reflect the savings in the operations, yep. what we're putting aside for a debt service, and then also what is a fair capital. I mean, I talked to James today. He has that almost done. So oh, um, good. He, he's okay. aware of our free cash um, certification. At, good. At the, so that went. Yeah, through. that's okay. all done. He knows where that is. He sent right. that to Dave today. So I should get that probably tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You'll have. Yes. That recommendation for yeah. rate structure going forward. So. Okay. I just, I just didn't want people to feel that we were not being sensitive to the fact. Of course fact we are. Yeah. That, if we have uh, enough to cover, and yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't we, want to raise rates any rates. further than we, you need to. We want to make the rates really realistic of what our true needs are. Needs are as we're going along here, and we're doing everything we can to keep the prices as low as possible, the hustle money, the whole thing. Yep. And. Um, you know, I feel like people really supported us and trusted us, and now we really have a lot of work to do to make sure that we reflect back yeah. to them. I think there was a clear trust. mandate yeah. that we there got is. in a there vote. There is, there was. A clear mandate to, that our plan going forward was, was how we wanted to move forward, right. and they were they were um, approving that, so I want to roll forward on that, so that'd be great. Yeah, um, no. I think we're all on the same page. We just, yep. we just want to make sure that everything is you know, I, I, I know it's a lot to put on you, Mike, but I was just hoping you would look at the whole package and be able to start helping us sort it no, out. No, it's not a lot to put on me. Thank you. Um, absolutely. I, and I echo Trevor and, and Diana's recommendation from the USDA and Rebecca that um, Dave Prickett has a lot invested in uh, this project. He's um, very well versed in the um, operations at that plant. Um, and absolutely transparency should be key to Absolutely. selecting 
an engineer, and mm -hmm. I would hope that Dave uh, is given just consideration for the work he's done. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get that lined up and uh, have a public meeting for everybody. I mean, I, I was told they're going to bring a giant check, so that's what that's I want to see yeah. when they come to yeah. visit us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe yeah. four feet by six. I don't know. So, so are we buying pizza so we'll have for that amount of money? I'd buy pizza. I'll buy pizza. <laughs> That'd be great. So I, I do think on the next agenda, we did plan to either have the rate setting hearing or yes, be exactly. close to. We should so be I very close we, to yes. that. Yes. So um, if not doing it, we have to. we're anxious to get that yeah. figured. And, and uh, when I, I, I happen to drive by um, James today, he was in Long Meadow and they were had a camera down a manhole, <laughs> and it, he said that he had sent the. Um, the information, all the stuff was done, he sent it to Dave, so he's just revealing that, would sent that on to us, okay. and then we could hold a hearing and see what we think of it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. So, do you, do you want to hit, um, why don't we hit all these and then we can do the, mo yeah. most all of them before we get to, you know, the, the um, uh, budgets. Um, so, discuss town match dollars for um, Municipal Vulnerability uh, Preparedness Grant, rounds three and four, recommendation to award tie and bond contracts under the MVP for Mill Village Road Culvert and Kelleher Drive Culvert. Um, so, I, and you may, Diana, you may be able to help with this a little bit. I, I didn't, um, I'm not fully aware, but I know the breakdown of the dollar amount, you know, on the warrant you had. 78,000, can right. you just? So, well, the 78,000, so there's a couple things. The, so the town match for the MVP money, um, there in the warrant, um, I had proposed putting in the 78,056, which is the current match needed for the MVP three grant. For so the three grant. Um, that and, and that covers. Um, that's the Mill Village total, or that's the total that we need for MVP three. The total grant was 389. And part, correct, yep. and okay. that was for the construction of the Mill Village Road um, culvert and the activities around our climate resiliency workshop, our RAVE um, signing up for RAVE, our RAVE alert system, the great hydro emergency plan. Um, it has work for, with the conservation district, they're actually going to be um, looking at conserving some of the properties in the floodplain, I understand, as part of that grant work. So, uh, okay. Franklin Land Trust. Or, excuse Franklin me, I'm sorry, Land Franklin Land Trust. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I think that then about summarizes it. And that was and all then, phase three, right? That's yep. all MVP three, yep. yes. Yeah, so that's our current activities that we've been working on that were funded in partly in FY19, partly in FY20. They've Correct. given us an allotment. These grants are coming out in, you know, within like four weeks. We have the opportunity right. to apply. They're being awarded very quickly. Last time it was embargoed. The information was embargoed right. and they wanted you to sign a contract within the time period that it was embargoed. So it makes it very difficult. It um, does. So if I'd you don't like have money to. In reserve, right? You need some money in reserve to be able to act correct. on these grants. When they so come. we had a discussion in the in the spring town uh, spring budgets uh, discussion about putting money aside for grant matches. Right. The issue is that I didn't feel comfortable at that time having that money in a budget in contracted mm -hmm. services per right. like for instance. So, you know, that's just in a line. That's like $80,000 or sitting, sitting there. there. Yep. So Brenda, I think Brenda and maybe Skip, there had been some discussion about let's, um, you know, we talked to DLS and we are still working with DLS on, um, I sent them a copy of the warrant to mm -hmm. show them what we're trying to do again so that um, that we can maybe have an account that we put in there. They understand what, what we're saying, that we don't want to just put it in a, in a budget line, right. that I'd like to have some account. But generally, a grant match isn't something that, that you, you budget for, yeah. right? You yeah. Well, you can put it into a budget line. You can put it into, you know, selectman you know expenses. How much it is, right. And right. Really I mean, you could just know. budget a hundred thousand dollars in selectman expenses, and you know, and and use that for your grant matches. Gotcha. But my point is, if you didn't get those grants, you have, you know, you have a hundred thousand dollars sitting in your there. budget. Right. Which you could do anything with, exactly. but you really want it nailed so, down. So, so what will you? Yes. I, I don't suggest. You know, I don't yeah. think so the finance committee for, would feel comfortable necessarily with that. Right. Well, so what were you thinking for Article 4? Because the Kelleher Drive, 
is a big ticket. It's a big ticket. I mean, that's over a million dollars. Yes. So exactly. So we have a. I have a. Um, a phone. We so uh, Brenda and I had a, a conference call with David Guzman this week, and now I have an email into him. So he's checking. So for, um, you know, I have the warrant prepared. I have a signature page prepared, but I'd like to pin down that language if it needs to change for the warrant. Mostly it might need to change for the motion, Carolyn. Right. Right. So it might be fine with the with the warrant. It's really to notify people that we're gonna that put we're gonna some have some dollar amount. Yes. Right. But but in the motion I want it to say, you know, where it's gonna live, right. where the money's gonna live. I, yeah. Um I, I well we hadn't made a decision on the Kelleher Drive because it's so expensive. It's a million two. Right now we are one of only a few uh, communities that have been funded every single round. Right. And I kind of want to keep it going. Yeah, it'll be nice. But if we put it in, if they, they, if they f look at us and say the only reason we're doing this is because it's a 75% match on culverts, you know, and the culverts can be a million two like yeah. Kelleher Drive or 300,000 like Mill Nobody. Village, they're going to get a little aggravated. So mm -hmm. I was, um, Kelleher Drive is actually big enough to go under the small bridge. So I was using the MVP program to do the engineering because you can do the pre-engineering mm -hmm. and, and I'll get all the information and then we will get in line on the small bridges. For the actual construction for part. The actual, so how much do you think you'd need for money for Article well, 4 then? Our, or is it Article our, 4? Well, round 4 because round, four is, round 3 is, is, it pre, is the engineering for Kelleher Drive was already reward, uh, awarded oh, to okay. us. Right. So, so that's the engineering. The M, the, right. The MVP3, the 78, we have that award. So okay. we need to match um, that. We need to match that. So that's the 78. Correct. Yeah. But that's I have put on there a placeholder in the warrant just for MVP4, just so you yeah, understand the that they're we, exactly. That was, that was exactly. what our discussion was. And what we're going to meet on Tuesday, next Tuesday, is right. we're going to decide what we want. I mean, it's more, I mean, we can make that motion for the town meeting, but we haven't decided what we're going to do in round four yet. And you could just not act on that if you decide at town meeting it's just right. too early. Too early right. or whatever. But they, the right they're going to have another round in another couple of weeks. I know, so. and I'd hate to not have some money ready for taking I know. advantage So we have that, to decide. But. I think next Tuesday then we have to decide mm -hmm. what we want to do under the next grant round. Mm -hmm. and, and then that will determine what that Article Four is going to be, but I, well, I don't. I don't think anything. it's smart to put in for Keller Drive under the MVP because it, right. it's just like it looks too much. And lights, right. you I know, know, and it's and I don't want to break our luck. I mean, right now we're we're yeah. getting. I right. agree. And we have this sort of a mix and right. implementation success, and they're and and they have to have a few communities that are successful. Yeah, and they're and we're one of them. So let's keep it going. I just I don't feel, I don't feel like yeah, this no, is, I agree. That's we don't know what the thing. next round money is if he if he's going to put traditionally that he only puts like 10 or 20 million so to award us right the whole uh, 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 well we'd be over a million so to award us the only all that money I just don't think it's going to happen right so it's a long shot yeah whereas okay. the small bridge program there's a waiting list but if we get in there by the time the engineering is done, which is what is we just already. what we just got sponsored, we we can be in that list and we'll move up, because that yep. gets that gets fifty sixty million dollars at a time. Right. And so that those goes in chunks of five or ten communities at a time. So, so I think we'll, that's smart. So you'll meet on Tuesday. You'll decide if there isn't going to be if there's anything going to be needed for Article the Phase right. Four. You're right. We okay. have that meeting at twelve thirty. I I just. You know, we had a whole bunch of ideas, but we don't have any dollar amounts mm -hmm. yet, as far as I know. So are we good with, um, you know, and then the And then Article 3 is along those lines as well. So that's for, um, so Chris Curtis has been working with us as our MVP consultant. He um, would be... He'd we're still up the next round. right. So part of it is grant application services, but mm -hmm. he also is still still doing some planning services for the implementation of the round two, which mm -hmm. had the flood plain by yeah. bylaws and the green infrastructure, and the and some of that um, isn't in. That was a previous grant that you know we didn't get that process done quickly here with 
you know, our town right. board. Plus, so he still has to work plus on that he's slightly. supposed to be reaching out to DCI, which is the, um, that green community. Yes, he did. Yes, and he's and working with them on that. On how right. to, 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 more, to merge our complete streets with the MVP program. So I see. maybe there's something in the complete streets that we can do under right. this. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, so I think that's a good investment. Because DCI apparently is one of the best in the country. And so um, that's who we're working with on the tree boxes and the green mm -hmm. infiltration, green infrastructure policy and all that kind of stuff. So okay. I think it makes smart sense to get him to get us ready for that round four that would incorporate some of the complete street requirements. Mm -hmm. And then we can say, well, you're, we're doing this, and then can you fund this under the complete streets, which we need to get in under October. So we could do we maybe have, have two agendas? applications going. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I mean, that's, we can. Okay. Sounds well, it, if, no, if, people, if people thought <laughs> that we were actually doing, I mean, if they could see something actually be installed for next spring, I think people would be so excited. I mean, because we've been talking about this since 2013. I know. And that would just be really nice. It's a lot of planning that went ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. No, it makes sense. Okay. So, um, so we're good at Article Two, good on Article Three. Skip, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Can you come up and so we can talk about this now instead, because um, we don't have another meeting until the twenty fifth. Uh, and we want to make sure we have an informational night. The, the finance committee is meeting tomorrow night, and yes. So I would like to invite. Some of you, all of you, yeah, because uh, I'm sure that there will be questions. The, the questions, that, the principal question that I have is uh, these various articles are the amounts where there aren't any in some cases, and where's the money coming from? <clears throat> I know it's tough, but someplace along the way, it'll be able to tell us where the money's coming from. Well, I don't, I, I mean, the 78,000 should be coming from free cash. Okay, what about? But I don't, I don't know about the rest. You, the, only, the only money you have is free cash. Right. You right. don't have any other money that I know of. Uh, you can talk with the, with the uh, assessors and find out whether or not it's possible to raise and appropriate, uh, but I doubt it at this point. So any raise and appropriate that you would be doing would be in 2021 funds. Right. <clears throat> yep. So at town meeting, what are we, what are we looking for? We're, the finance committee is meeting tomorrow night. We'd like to be able to take a position, but if we don't know what the dollars is, then I guess the only position we'll take is no thank you. Uh, we'll get you some info by tomorrow. The 78,000 is, um, you know the MVP match, and the eight thousand is a ten, a match of ten towards ten thousand, on the signboard, uh, the you know lit, big giant signboards, mm -hmm. which is really um, useful and needful, for us. So um, we can use it for multiple things, and so it was a good opportunity. No, I, it wasn't. To, I'm not arguing the. Uh those are the, the only two. You just where you get the money. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's how much. See right. if the town, number six, to see if the town will raise an appropriate, et cetera. Yep. Well, what's, well we're working on that. We'll I'll get you all that I, don't, I actually don't know those numbers. I'll either. give you those. As soon as we're we haven't done discussed them. Uh, <clears throat> so that's really, I mean, the only one that I'm familiar with here is number 11. Yeah. <coughs> and, yep. you know, do you have I, any do you have any questions on that? No. In fact I you know, we'll take it up tomorrow, but I, I think I think it's absolutely essential that we go ahead and acquire the land. Yep. And uh, I would at this point in time not recommend using free cash. Correct. I would right. recommend borrowing. Mm hmm And uh, and then in April, when we put all the budgets together, we'll see what we've Pretty got and decide how much of that, you know, we, we start paying down. Pay back, pay down. Yep. Yep. Uh, sounds like a good plan. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're thinking that way. I think most uh, yeah. of us felt that same way. Yep. 
So your recommendation is to borrow all of it and not use free cash or any of it? Then? Pardon? Your recommendation would be to borrow the... Well, the, for the... For the, the Article 11. For Article, Article 11. 11, that's the purchase. And not use free cash for any of that. And not use free cash for that. Okay. Other things, you know, the only place that you've got is... It's free cash. I don't know whether you could borrow. I guess you could borrow for some of it, but doesn't that makes no sense. So I think the dis discussion is uh, if, if not free cash, then what or why? Right. right. Uh, what is Article 11? That's um, buying back the natural baker's property okay. yeah. at Oxford so they Pickle. Didn't, they didn't. They have a new, yes. um, they have a completely new um, management, team, management, team. Ma management team, and they decide to stay in Greenfield. So we want, which is we want control of I mean, that property again. We want to get the property back. Cause it just, it's been too long. Yeah, we were going to ask for an extension on the 30 days. They gave you 30 days or something like that? They gave us an extension until October 15th. They uh, provided we have a special uh, scheduled for September 30th. Considering we did a lot of extensions for them, I think that was. <laughs> yeah, we can extend, and that, that we can be extended again too, right. just to be clear, right. if we, by, by agreement, by mutual we'll agreement. In good shape by then, hopefully. So, yeah, we'll tackle some of those other. Other articles a little later on. I, 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 I just any time to discuss them. Yeah, no, I, 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 can I just uh, say so? So Skip and I talked a little bit about. I mean, so for what I was starting to say on just your agenda item that we were on MVP services yep. that yep. also Chris is asking for the 3,500. So that um, I put on your warrant, um, you know, and I would you know put that into contracted services, but it's not needed in contracted services right now. So it doesn't, you know, it's something that right. you, if you have another special town meeting, it could be put on a future town meeting and it may not be needed at all depending on how right. contracted services goes. Right. But I think it's important that the board and the public and the finance committee understand that, that we're that going to to sign a contract for $3,500 for something that I didn't put in contracted originally. services originally. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, that makes sense. I mean, that's, that's one of the things where uh, if, if, so long as it's appropriate to, to spend the money, that we've got the reserve fund. So those, that's right. something that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, you might, and you might suggest that and we can drop the article. Yeah. Because the, the thing is with this whole, <clears throat> I mean, when we were putting the budget together for contracted services, uh, we, we weren't really sure what was happening with the MVP program. But every time the governor seems like he can get a few million dollars, he, th he puts it in the MVP and we have another round. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the thing is, as more communities join, it's going to be, we'll be at a disadvantage. But right now, we're getting funded for everything. So let's just keep doing it. And um, I mean, there's huge opportunities to get stuff done. And uh, there is not another program that will do 75% of our culverts. And we have 119 in town that need to be replaced. So we have quite a few rounds that we could go. And it would make sense for us to be doing at least a couple at a time. Can any, if we have it, I don't even know what's available. Can Chapter 90 funds be used for some of these? Yeah, but we don't get enough Chapter 90 <clears throat> funds. We only get like 300,000 or... 200,000 chapter 90 funds and these culverts are some of them some, some of them are relatively reasons. small or 40 or 50 thousand dollars but like the mill village one is you know 300 and something yes. it's more than our all our chapter 90 money so um we did the one on um on mill village lower down on um, bars farm that was 160,000 that we paid for and then the franklin conservation district was able to buy the culvert open bottom culvert so it only costs 160 but hmm. um you know the we the franklin conservation district doesn't have that kind mm -hmm. of cash anymore that was a one time where was where did that cash used to come from well that was a fine um there somebody dumped something in the river oh. and so we so had we the had the we had an opportunity to um invest in any of the communities along the river yeah. and so i put into that because yeah. it the open bottom culvert and, and it, it absolutely does increase the flow of water back and forth, but it's yeah. also environmentally better because, you know, all you right. your salamanders, everybody goes back and forth. Yep. So just, we're doing the same thing um, at the other Mill Village culvert. Got a bunch of salamanders. 
We actually Especially get 389. Do they have four lives or six? <laughs> yeah. What, what do we get in chapter nine? We get 389. This year we got 389? Yeah, that's yeah. what we got this year. Yeah. Quick, though. Yeah. yeah. And well, we've got, based but on our set. Years in, year, in years past, we've only gotten like 200,000. Mm. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, they it depends. Did they think upped it. Conversation I had with Kevin that the chap all the chapter 90 money is already earmarked for paving and right. road yeah. maintenance. Yeah. Yes. So and I believe he's, you know, the new paving management plan, he's still working on it. It's, it's in, but there's mm -hmm. it's a draft form, right? Yeah. He's working on that right now. So yeah. it'd be good to see that and where that goes from the future. I mean, we've got mm -hmm. Lower Road as a mess, Upper Road. I, I think Lower Road is, is next, actually. Yeah. Um, we'll that yep. came came out pretty clear. In the, yeah, I think so. Um, so. So the recommendation is to delete Article 3? Uh, we let's let's wait on that. Okay. We can we can make yeah. that decision on the twenty fifth. Okay. Pass on it. Okay. Okay. So um, so we'll get back to the rest of the articles after. Do you want to just? Are, are we done with the MVP stuff right now? Move on to another item. I think item? so. Did you have any more questions, Skip? The articles six, seven, eight, and nine, if I'm reading them right, uh, all deal with additional staff. Yes. So, yep. I mean, at that point in time that you discuss those, then? Yes, then I'll come back. Uh, yeah, okay. I plan to come tomorrow night to see you. <clears throat> Are you going to discuss them tonight, or? Yeah, we hope so. Okay. But um, af after a little bit, though. We'll and, and, that one, and that one, you know, my question again is going to be, where's the money coming from? Yep. And, you know, we've talked about the various sources of funds. Correct. And those are pretty well cash. tied up. Yep. So you've got free cash, and I've got a problem using free cash for ongoing uh, mm -hmm. staffing. Yep. That really needs to come out of uh, money that, uh, whether it's taxes or uh, other whatever recurring funds that we have. So. Yep. Skip, if I could ask you a question. The free cash that's certified every year comes from the surplus from the previous year budget? Uh, yeah, some so, of it. So, so positions that were budgeted for, for staff that went unfilled, <clears throat> become the free cash, mm -hmm. right? Well, or, or we're very conservative. Yeah, we're very conservative in what we um, get in building inspection fees and. There's a, there's a uh, variety of. But, uh, but surplus in the budget yes. is transferred yes. to free cash. Yeah, correct. It's right. your savings correct. account that you, you didn't spend. Right based on unanticipating hiring processes or anything well, like no, that? very little of that. It, you A know, we have things. really three sources of funds, taxes, and that's, that's pretty cut and dry. Right. Uh, we've got what we call local receipts, and there are 10 mm -hmm. or 12 items under local receipts. Yep. And typically we raise in the two, two and a half million dollar range annually. That one, that one is one of these that goes up and down. Right. So yep. we basically budget uh, approximately 80% of what we anticipate. So if we we thought we got a good shot at bringing in two and a half million, we'll say two million is what we'll budget. Sure. That way we cover our butt. Now in some cases we're really lucky. Not only does it come in at two and a half, but it comes in at 2.75 million. So and we only budgeted two million, so we have seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars that comes in over and above what we budgeted. Mm -hmm. That's this year. We can also go the other way where we, we do drop down. So that's so, the conservative we, nature of it. Your and question about six, seven, and eight about staff salaries. Yeah. Um, my point being is that, um, the monies that were not spent on staff salaries revert to free cash. Right. So that's kind of a simple transaction to get that back into the budget to make up for Oh, yeah. That money that wasn't spent, that was planned for and voted on, um, and... Uh, but by and large, there's very little money that was uh, voted for for staffing uh, that isn't spent. Oh, and we're not talking about big money here, so it's, no. I, I mean, and it's... I think, uh, and I think the other part of that equation is that um, while... So we haven't really been aggressive in what we have wanted to see for staff, and we've talked about it, and at the last minute it gets yanked out, and there's been a big you know, back and forth whether we're actually gonna staff somebody for the jobs we have. And I think just with my um, 
experience over the last couple of years. I, I now see what I'd like to see for organizational structure and um, want to make some change and want to see some staff and, and um, some uh, pay structures to, to fund that office that we've been stumbling around for the last four years on. So um, while we didn't budget for it, you know, the initial we had discussions of this, of putting these positions in and stuff, and you know, kind of last minute we decided, okay, we're not going to do that because we don't really know what we're doing yet. We think we can get by without it. Um, and then you get halfway through the year and you realize, you know, we, we really could have used that. We, we have, um, you know, positions in place now we'd like to fund a certain way and we'd like to, you know, staff a certain way. So, you know, I think going forward next year, um, I would like to, you know, advocate for certain positions and certain structures and then, you know, I would like to selfishly act on them sooner. Um, so I, while well, a budget let me, for let me it. Let just throw out a hypothetical so you can understand my concern. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and these numbers aren't accurate. Let's say we had our, our normal expenditures are $10 million. Yep. And the schools get seven and a half million and the town gets two and a half million. That's, those, that's yep. under what we, that two and a half million next year increases in taxes, increases here, there, give or take two and a half, three percent. Yep. So two and a half million, three percent, 7,500 bucks. Uh, if you spend more than $7,500, where's the money coming from? Yep. And I can tell you right now, the employees that are here are going to say, hey, look, do I get my raise? It's only 7500 bucks you get to distribute. I want my raise. Mm -hmm. Or is it 70, 75000 Right. But the point is, it's a relatively small number. Correct. So if we're going to increase staffing, if we're going to add $100,000 to the staffing cost of the, the town, yep. then we need to be able to not only say, well, we can grab the 100000 this year out of free cash. What are we going to do next year? Yeah. What are we going to do the year after? Right. And the year uh, after and the year yeah. after. Yeah. And we, so we need to be able to talk to the town at town meeting and say Correct. this is what we need to do and this is what we're asking you to do to, to accomplish that. Absolutely. Uh, yep. And you I'm know very well that we that. do balance our budget on free cash. And I know people don't we, like us to do that, but that's the reality. We actually have done a pretty good job the last few years of we not have. budgeting. We've been getting better. We, we're using free cash. Uh, more for non-recurring For non-recurring. And that may be, very well be buying uh, capital. But that's equipment. because we, uh, you know, we returned so much money from our, our own office. Mm -hmm. We have over the... We've been, uh, we've been wicked understaffed for a long yeah. time. No, I, I plan to make it, that case. Yeah, yep, it's exactly. just It's just a yep. matter of being able to explain to the town... Right, what you're doing you know, and why you're doing it. asking for an extra, whatever the number is... Correct. ...this year... And, and, and therefore, we're going to be in the future. Right. And we would like your support to do that, Absolutely. however that works. Right. Yep, that's, that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, Skip, your points were very well taken. And yeah. the fact that organizations haven't planned for legacy costs is, mm -hmm. is well, mm -hmm. well put. Yeah. Thank you. It's true. Well, yeah. um, speak, so um, while we're on this right now, um, we have a 6 o'clock selectmen's meeting on the 25th. So can we schedule... Um, at least 45 minutes to go over the as an informational night. Sure. Um, I mean, if, on the on what we end up doing in the next week, mm -hmm. so everyone is aware. Skip, would you, you be able to attend on the 25th with the finance committee? 25th. What day is that? That's it's a Wednesday. Wednesday. It's in two Wednesday. weeks. Maybe. Okay. okay. Well, what we're trying to do is um, final. We want to finalize what we're taking two to town meeting now. on the 30th. Okay. Two, that's right, two, well, maybe, because I was going to say next week I've got something coming up. Okay. Uh, so if it's not next week, then probably two weeks. No, yep. it's two weeks. Yeah. Two okay. weeks so from tonight. Five o'clock or something. And well, no, I was thinking still six. Cause we, we oh, and then we take, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yep. we okay. just do it that's at fine. six. Yep. And we, you know, go over the warrant, mm -hmm. what we're actually taking to vote on the 30th. Right, information for the public. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. That'd be good. Okay. So um, we can knock out a couple of these quick. Um, we've got uh, approval one day wine and malt license for village uh, village festival event at Yankee Candle on September 21st and 22nd. Uh, so it looks like there's still 
due, payments still due, correct? On this, it says 60 due. This is for Berkshire Brewing. Get my glasses on so I can read this. So Berkshire Brewing Company serving from, uh, this is at Yankee Candle Village, uh, serving from 1 to 4 on September 21st, and uh, Building 8 Brewing serving from 1 to 4 on September 22nd. I make a motion we approve that pending, um, payment. pending payment. Yep. I'll second. All those in favor? Any Aye. discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then um, we have a one day liquor license for Apple Fest. This is also for Yankee Candle Village uh, on October 5th. <coughs> Same um, thing, and it looks like, um, but I don't have on um, this is who will be serving and who's going to be on premise. Do you know, Diana, do you know who it is? Do you want to wait on this? I don't. I don't have any, I, I can't really approve this without <coughs> I was put together. In the yeah, no, there's nothing I just here. Had her book it, put it right I mean, there, it's maybe a placeholder, but we can wait for right. our next meeting for that, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Yep, yeah. because yeah, okay. we yeah, we'll meet on the 25th. So okay, that back. So we'll hold on that. That looks good. So uh, we also have uh, approve an MOU uh, with um, excuse me Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. This is the uh, third party inspection of the town's transfer station and landfill. Um, it's a 10 year contract and that's why I think we need to. No, I think that's different, that's, right? Oh, this is I different I think this one? is different. Yeah, so there's, am I right about yes, that? Yes, this yeah. is, tonight's just the MOU for the uh, monitoring that you oh, have the them do. The yeah, they've yep. been doing that for you annually. This is just the annual. Oh, this is our, uh, yep. uh, um, I'll make a motion to approve that. And then, uh, this is, this or the, is some, I should say the third party inspection. It's not really the monitoring. Right. That's done by Fuss and O'Neill. But this is the inspection report. And then Fuss and O'Neill does their work based on this report. Do you have any info on that? I don't think I have that. I think right I have here. the original. Yeah. Just the MOU? I don't have any more info oh, than just the, the MOU. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. I was looking at the other thing. Um, We're a member of the district. Town operates municipal transfer. <clears throat> this is just our, our the annual, renewal of our, right, yep. of our regular district um, inspection. Bucks. Okay. Yep. We, um, and I have two originals here. Does, two to sign. Okay. Yeah, Janamine does a really good job with this. I'm, I make a motion to approve this. You have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 There should be two copies. Yeah. Yep. Two here. So uh, next item will be to re um, request for appointment to the personnel board for uh, Lisa Mittens. And she's uh, sent in a letter to be asked to be appointed to the personnel board. And I would love to make that motion. I'll make that motion. Thank you. I have a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Oh, it's wonderful. That's great. We're, oh, we're, we're there, I think. We have so. three, I believe, and I, I understand the Finance Committee will have somebody tomorrow evening. We certainly hope so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we then also uh, have an appointment to the ZBA for John Staberski. Um, I make I that see motion. His letter of application and willingness to serve. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, you know what, Bob Decker, um, I saw Bob Decker on Monday at the meeting, and he said that here, here you got this checked off, is that we appointed them? But no, I checked those off today. So, no, I have not. I think we should maybe appoint the rest. Oh, so. Yes, we have. Yeah. We did not we appoint them. I don't think we have. We haven't done them. That's why I have the, I have right. the CBA appointments on the agenda. Because, yep. yeah, and Trevor. So I'll go through those now. How, and come, you have, how come we didn't appoint them? 
I, I think mean, we were holding. Thing. I don't I know. Think I think we were holding until we figured out what we were going to do. But I, I don't remember. I think we always skipped over that because I've got a zero here with no check mark. Oh, okay. So well, I, I mean, good thing they had no meetings yes. this summer. Yes, it is. Um, actually, they're, well, they don't, they're still right. appointed. They're still appointed. You're, they're, yeah, any, until they're not appointed. Anymore. Right, until somebody else is seated and really? qualified. Yeah. I thought it was only a one-year appointment. It is, no. but it's, it doesn't, um, they still are in their seat until somebody else makes an appointment. Right, until someone's um, appointed and qualified. Yeah. All right. So, um, I, I, would, I would hate to have had them had a meeting, though, because I would I have to say. Well, they would still be a I mean, member. So, um, hmm. I'll make a motion now to appoint um, to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, Bernard Sadowski, uh, Richard Moody, Frank Morrow, Catherine L. Fenton, and Felton, Felton and um, of course we just appointed John Staberski. To, to the Zoning Board. To the Zoning Board of Appeals. I have a um, second. A second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Any other discussions? All those in favor? Aye. And, aye. And then we have two alternates would be um, Adam Sokolowski Adam Sokolowski and Robert oh. Decker. We make that motion. Anyway. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Diana, would you just make sure that when you send out the letter, tell them that we're sorry that we didn't realize that. I mean, I didn't realize it was this, it had gone on until Bob sent me, told me yesterday. I, th I could have sworn we did it. Maybe we decided not to do it, but yep. I, in my mind, I thought we had done it. I would have been a little bit more on top of it if I thought we didn't. That's done. Oh, I could have sworn we did, but whatever. And then. Um, we also um, regretfully accept the resignation from the Town Buildings Advisory Committee. Um, Deb Dacious, she's uh, yeah. moving on with some other stuff and planning yeah. and didn't have enough time to continue. So we, we really thank her for her work um, on that committee. And she's been, I, I have they to did, say done that a great job. That committee is so together. And they've done a Julie great job. And John Pachork and yep. they, everybody Bruce did. Hunter. Bruce Hunter, they did a fantastic job on Saturday. It was yep. a really good presentation. Yep. Good turnout. Good turnout, a lot of good information. I'm, I'm really excited. So thank you, Deb, for your service. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you to the whole committee. It was lovely. So I think um, at this time, uh, I was, uh, do you, um, well, do you want to do the town administrator's report now before we do executive session? Uh, I or suppose you if you want to. I mean, I was just going to basically give you a quick update um, yeah. on this week. So we have, sure. um, we had the boo, we had, went to a boo meeting and we formed a working group. Um, you had on the agenda to receive the report from Diane Cornwell. And so we started that process. And in the meantime, we've, formed a working group and there'll be a meeting at the end of September um, and that working group will include counseling on aging members from all three towns. Yep. Um, I'm hopeful to have a Deerfield Council on Aging meeting next week um, before the meeting on the 26th. Um, so okay. I'm trying to get can, that scheduled we as well. Can get Diane's report? Yes, yes, I have it. And in fact, the boo has asked for it to be distributed to them in, in a computer copy. And you, copy you guys it. have seen it before, but I will redistribute yeah. it I, to I you. Would, I would yeah. like a printed yeah. copy. A printed copy, sure. okay. Just sure. so I can read it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Highlight. Highlight. yeah. yeah. So, that's, um, so the timing of that I think is really great. It's, it's going to start working concurrently with what we're doing in Deerfield for the buildings advisory, um, looking at the town buildings and then the, the senior center activities and the surveying and things like that. So I think right. it'll all work really well together. There's a huge need for, for space there and a good building and, you know, just amazing looking at the, um, if anyone got a chance to look at, um, and I, I believe it I don't know if it was filmed. Did F FCAP film that? So hopefully it's either up online or it will be shortly. Um, just the presentations by the architect on senior, center. senior centers um, and community fantastic. centers or aging, you know, aging centers um, all across the state and, well, the region that, that this architect firm had been involved with. And just the welcoming spaces and just the thought process to putting, you know, everything on one floor, no step from the curb, 
um, no hallways, everything moved from program space to program space. It was lighted, you're always looking from one section into another, so you're always seeing what else is happening, what else you can get involved with. Um, they've really got it down on My how they're doing uh, it. Uh, once in a while, my mosquito meeting, district meetings are at the Northampton um, Senior Center. Yeah. And it's the same concept as you walked in. It's like a reception living room area. Yeah. And then your, all your programs are out and um, meeting rooms. I mean, we usually meet in the library and it's really cozy and really yeah. nice. And I just think, you know, it just. It's really, it would be very nice to have our town have something like that for our seniors. Yeah. Long term planning of, you know. Yeah. We need, you know, our buildings are aging. So I'm so excited to read the reports. What, you know, what's next? What's, you know, looking out 20 years? What do we want for a building? And do we want to tie a town hall to it and um, do a community center? So it's just inspiring to, to look at that stuff and see what the possibilities are. It only takes money. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's the hard part. Right. So um, that's just, right, that's yep, just sorry, one, you know, that's, of course, that's just one project of many. So that's yes. one thing that's moving along and, and um, we also, Mike and I, attended a Small Town Administrators of Mass meeting in Lenox, and we heard about the energy, a little bit about DOR, DOER's uh, next steps for the SMART program, which I great. think was really great timing from what we heard from Beth Greenblatt and the yeah. landfill development. So speaking of that, we've um, reached out to Nexamp, and we'll be setting up that meeting, the, starting to do Good. that negotiation with Nexamp. Yeah. Um, the I reached out to Paul Carey. I have we haven't heard of the Met, the Meta Grant awards have not been made yet, so we are still in the running, and they'll be announced in October. So I hadn't heard, but I'm hopeful we still might get that um, Meta Grant award. Um, we had also a uh, as a uh, an additional meeting on what Saturday we had the Complete Streets meeting, and that was mm -hmm. we had a fantastic turnout. We had uh, a lot of the people that came for the early meeting stayed. We had additional people come. We got feedback. Um, Mike is putting that feedback together, and we are going to send that back to our engineer by the end of this week, and then he'll start putting the prioritization plan or the projects on a, a sheet, and um, they'll be recommending some prioritization based on the criteria we put in our policy, but then they'll have a public outreach session again to talk about projects and prioritization. And at that time, the projects will be costed out as well, and they'll be more identified in terms of what the project would, would that be. that be ready for October 2nd? Because we're having the MVP and the hazardous mitigation public meeting. Can we add in complete streets for that? Because we want to integrate it. Yeah, it's possible. I can, can talk to Vinod if we can. With him? Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, if so you tell them that we already have it set up. Yeah, if we October have something 2nd. and people want to want to give feedback, that'd be wonderful. Um, um, is, would Chris is Chris's time is covered for that? Is that correct for that meeting October second? We don't have to have. Oh no, that meeting is in part of our current MVP grant. Yes, that's work so, that we're doing as okay. part of our what current time MVP. Is that it's six o'clock. Six o'clock on the second. On the second. Okay, it's a required you. MVP. Yep public meeting to update this is where we're going to set our priorities okay. for round four and then um, based on our meeting on Tuesday we're okay. going to present them because yep. you can't update the plan but we will we want to update the plan we know already for the um, concrete tanks down at the yeah so we're going to put that in there up okay. you have to update the plan every time you add something so we're going to update um, the sewer treatment plant tanks add that into the plan and okay. whatever we decide on Tuesday and then the haz hazard mitigation plan requires a team meeting which we're having on Tuesday as well and then I mean we're doing this multiple yeah yeah Let's and then so on two so they they require also a public input and that's why I told everyone everyone absolutely on Kelleher Drive North Main Street come and do your complaints so we can you know sign yeah, in no all you have to do is sign in your name and say yeah, why you're right. here yeah you know, and I know I've gotten multiple calls over the years, so all those people, please come. Um, and that, um, so then we can file our hazardous mitigation plan. That's the last thing we have to do for our hazardous mitigation plan. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kimberly will finish it up and submit it right. to MEMA, and then it goes to FEMA, and then hopefully we'll make our deadline. 
Yeah. Right, so complete streets. And then um, we are, I had a meeting a few weeks ago with uh, Eversource, so we are, we have another follow-up meeting um, with Kevin and myself, right. and uh, we'll be bringing some folks from the Energy Committee. But in addition to working with them on coordinating our EV chargers, uh, our downtown initiative for EV chargers, we're also looking at the possibility of a solar canopy and some decorative lighting initiatives with them. We're going to talk about the street lights again with them. Yes, thank you. And, and Paul, has, Paul has called. Bessel was called a couple okay. times on that, so I can give you his contact. I haven't reached back out to him yet, but maybe. Okay. Well, you in. might remember National Grid when we looked into it um, in in the in the eastern part of the state. National Grid was giving a much more uh, a generous offer for the purchase of streetlights. And we looked into it with Eversource, it was up around $80,000. Right, so we're right. looking to see if there's a possibility of bringing that cost right. down That'd and working great. with Eversource in and some way to do that. Can we do that, that under, uh, isn't that a green communities eligible thing? Maybe there's grant money that we okay. can use we'll to, for the that. initiative as well. The one thing when, you, when you're meeting with Eversource, I know you've been meeting with, I Okay. Melissa Hancock. Melissa, yeah, is the, is the bottom of uh, right Sugar Loaf, away. the base yeah. of Sugar Loaf. So we are still working on, um, yeah. I have gotten calls as well on the base of Sugar Loaf, and there's some ownership issues that need to be sorted out. But we right. are working with those Good. folks with the state and Eversource to try to determine that and who can get, um, right get some it. progress going with the uh, the improvements of that parking lot because yeah. it's extremely DCR really wants hazardous. To do it. DOT wants to do it. It's, 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 the, it's Eversource holding that up. Okay. So, and so Melissa Hancock, so she's our, she she's the community uh, liaison. She's amazing, and she's also an attorney. So I just yeah. emailed her today. I just emailed her today. So hopefully she'll be following yeah. up on her. Yeah, yeah she's she's extremely helpful. So, um, so and then in our office, we've been of course looking at and continuing to work on economic development issues around the South Deerfield Center, um, but of course with Channing Beat, New England Natural Bakers. You know, those yeah. are things that are on our radar and talking to mass development. We need to and you know Carolyn's been doing a great job with outreach with Channing Beat, getting right. getting that um, information out to anybody you know who yeah, may be interested. Um, mm -hmm. Some you know people have uh, recommended different. Possibilities, um, you know, for-profit initiatives that might go there. So we've been yeah. passing those along to um, any. The one, the folks one that thing that I was thinking of is maybe um, can you, so you reach out to somebody at UMass? You know, they have the incubators and the startups mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I know I can't remember who it was. Right. But maybe we could reach out. Okay. Okay. Um, the uh, Town Buildings Advisory, you mentioned them earlier, they're doing great yes. work. The RFQ, they're going to be meeting next week to do the review of the RFQ, okay. which we've received those responses, right. so that's going to be moving along. Carolyn met, mentioned the Hazard and Mitigation Plan update, um, and then we're, of course, working on, you know, operational initiatives initiatives within our office, which we've talked about before. One thing on the warrant that I did mention and we hadn't discussed before, but I had been working on was getting an account set up for the 350th. Right. So I did add that on to the warrant. I would like to- now, I, I, I left a message for Brenda because I didn't know that this was on the warrant um, until I saw it today. Um, mm -hmm. So does this take care of, because we already have a set up, we voted and set up a donation account. Right, so basically this, this, this is, this would, in order to accept those donations, we want that to go into the account that then we can spend that money out of. So I'm not sure, this is the appropriation account. I'm not sure this is the donation Wait. account. But in other words, five years before the event, you can, you can appropriate money. And in fact, we appropriated money this year. Yes. But in order, the proper account to put it into when we start oh, spending okay. it so is the this. Donation, so we still have the donation count that yes. if people want to make a donation to. That's a gift account. Yes, yeah. Correct. And so this account will take care of for, for the fundraising committee. This will be for the appropriations. The appropriation. And then yeah. this is the one we can spend the year before, the year of, and the year okay, after. Okay, so we still need an account for the fundraising committee. Yes, for a fi we, okay. the fundraising committee, I believe Jennifer is working on setting up a 5013C. Th so that's what okay. I think they're looking at. And we already did set up a gift account, Carolyn, for for people to donate oh, yeah. in no, the town. Oh, yeah, no, I put my 100 right. bucks in there, and somebody else puts a couple do donations in, and because we wanted to do that copyright. We wanted to, but the, so I didn't know, you know, it's just $50, but mm -hmm. we need to spend yeah. it. So, right, right. Um, okay. I didn't. Yeah. I hadn't talked to Brenda to know that that was. This was for what we are appropriating. Right. So that's fine. Yep. Okay. All right. Good. We're okay then. Good. And um, 
as you mentioned, alluded to, we have, of course, been looking at our staffing in the yes. office. So we've created some uh, recommendations on some staffing initiatives and um, we are also doing the general code review. We hadn't mentioned that because that had yeah. kind of been sitting for a little while, but now that we have more capacity, um, yes. we'll be getting back into that. So, and I don't know if I covered everything. Mike's also working yeah. on. <laughs> that's just, that's a lot of stuff, but there's other additional things. Every day. Yeah. Is it, are we going to hit the uh, recommendations for the admin support for the planning um, and zoning? In a moment. Okay. Yep. I think I was going to um, take an executive session to um, kind of discuss uh, contract. Okay. So I'm going to, um, we'll do that and then we'll come back to open session um, and discuss recommendations, funding, that kind of stuff. So. Um, <clears throat> I'll make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 21B, Paragraph 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, interim uh, town administrator contract. Um, I'll second that. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And we will come back to open session when we're finished. Okay, so uh, we're returning from executive session back in open session on uh, September 11, 2019 at 9.07. So um, what we wanted to talk a little bit about um, with you was to hear your recommendations for staffing and uh, budgets for the two offices and what you foresee that kind of looking like because we're trying to figure out, you know, funding, what we can afford, what we can do. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted to kind of hear from you as to what, what you guys were, have been thinking about since okay. we've been working together for a bit and seeing yep. what we need. Okay. You want to go start? With the... Yeah, so yeah. Um, Diana asked me to look at uh, with uh, Patricia. Priscilla, yep. Resigning. Priscilla. Yep. Priscilla, I'm sorry. Yep. Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Um, she uh, has been handling the Zoning Board of Adjustment, the Planning Board, the Conservation Committee, and the Codes and Zoning Admin Support. And it's a, it, her position was part-time, but I think um, there's been some frustration uh, with the boards that they didn't have enough support uh, for their activity. Planning board, zoning board. Right, so there's right. the activity of walking people and, and coming with applications and processing that, but, um, and uh, she expressed some frustration that she didn't have enough time and a part-time salary to um, handle the board's activity as well. So Diana and I have recommended a new job description for that position, which I sent you. Yep. Um, it would be a, a full-time position, um, 40 hours a week, for that office to handle the uh, the two boards, the, and the conservation commission, and the all the permitting activity, so the the wiring, the plumbing, and Bob's uh, support on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think I put it in as a, um, and I'm not really familiar yet with your grading system, yep. but sure, sure. Uh, grade four or five, I think mm -hmm. we chose that would be. Um, appropriate for a full-time position and we really want to get someone uh, that has experience right. uh, with with MGL and yep. um, the uh, so getting someone of that caliper and um, having them come in with experience and not having to train them extensively but train them of course for the the you know the intimate actions of the office um, <coughs> would be necessary and given Pat's, so we're in the middle of the month almost now, mm -hmm. and she's given her resignation um, effective the 30th? Yes. The 21st. The 21st. Yeah, the 21st. So, oh, 21st? I, um, I believe she said her last day was the 21st, but she's agreed to. Yeah, oh, she okay. has agreed to come back on a per diem okay. to help uh, transition. Tra transition that okay. person. So we want to get that posted as soon as possible. Um, the one thing that we discussed is uh, she had been supporting um, the health agent, mm -hmm. um, but also Pat in our office <coughs> supports the health agent as well with a lot of his 
alcoholic beverage permits? No, uh, no, that's our permitting. He, she does the food service permits, the camp inspections. She actually does everything besides the septic. Okay. So Priscilla is okay. doing the septic for for the health agent, but the but our office is doing all the other uh, permits and and things that get issued for Board of Health. So we thought that. Um, well, I would I would suggest switching to the one person down here. Yeah. Right. So we. Yeah. Uh, so, so the health be. agent activity we thought could be compartmentalized in another office, and that's up to you to decide, but it would be a half-time position to support whoever the health agent is in the future mm -hmm. uh, with all the permitting that goes in with that. So there's the annual inspections that he has to do, um, there's the septic permits, and, and what Diana just alluded to, um, which Pat is helping support. So we thought that there'd be a, a position in next year's budget uh, for supporting Dick and that the new person would do that on an interim basis. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. I mean, so perhaps. There, there was a, in, the, yeah. in the annual budget, um, or in the springtime, I had, we had originally discussed at this, this table and voted, I believe, yeah. um, for an additional half-time person in inspections, and then we had talked about, and I don't know if you ever did vote it, but we had talked about an additional person, a half-time person in Board of Health, that those would be, um, that, that the Board of Health work could not be put into the inspections work right, in, its, in its entirety. It, it isn't, in fact, in there now. It's actually a separate, it's right. been separately held by this position, but, but the, the division of that has been um, difficult for, some, for mm -hmm. our constituents because then they go here sometimes and then they go here sometimes and then they're you know, doing this. So we, I think ideally is that the, currently Priscilla's full-time position is a grade three. Okay. What, what Mike is um, suggesting, perhaps that we want to bring it up to a grade four, mm -hmm. so that would require additional money. If we leave it at a grade three right now, even it would need an additional 100 hours because we still didn't put in the total number of hours that we needed. It, we, it's like almost, a, I can't remember how many, it's about short about 100 hours. So that alone is, um, you know, at the current rate would be about $2,500. So it depends if you wanted to go to a higher grade, then you would need to consider that in the, in the salary of the inspections department as well. well so I right now there's two half-time positions in there at one is at a grade two and one is at a grade three. Well, I think we should make it more professional. Mm -hmm. And I think we should also house everything down there. Agreed. Um, because we're finding that, I mean, Pat's doing other things and there's no time to do Slightman's business. Right. So, um, what's the difference to go up to grade four and, and then have um, a half time of that grade four? Well, so in the Board of Health, if we, if, so I had we we've, we've budgeted um, 23 and 17. Correct, so. right. So if in the inspections department, if you wanted to go to a grade four, um, you would be looking at adding probably about another 13,000, 13, depending. 000. I mean, depending on how, right. what step you hired at. But if that's hiring between step one and step three. Right. Um, if you wanted to, the Board of Health clerk, um, I was thinking that would be, um, you know, that's more... Um, uh, Claire, it is more just issuing the permits and things. Right. And Dick does most of the of the leg work and most of the work. It's more just a clerical support. Um, we had projected that would be an actual grade two position, right. and we that have that sense. in the classification plan right now. Right. It says administrative assistant for Board of Health. We have talked sense. about that in the springtime. And that so would be a part time. You said. I I'm I right. think it would be yeah, to start. It'd be. You know, not, we talked about 18 or 19 yeah. hours, and it, then we'd right. have to see going forward how what the demand busy is. Yeah, we exactly. Were. But the, what would be good is you could cross train that person to handle some clerical yes. on both. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And yeah. so absolutely. it would be that in itself would be worth. Mm -hmm. So if we added $14,000 to, um, is that going to be enough? Because so Trevor had, needs a no, number tomorrow for the finance. So if scheme. you had, so I, I had, I overall was was asking that you add that you'd need to add fourteen into the inspections department. So what what uh, that was the that was Article Seven with fourteen. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we would retain the in the Board of Health salaries, Article Eight. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's between. It ends up being about seventeen k to nineteen k. Yeah, but so that's I don't know there. if you want it to be. Is it already there? Twenty. No, it's no. not. It's no. not. We have we have um, grade two right here. Grade two. 17. Admin support for 17. 17. That's that? in the oh. inspections, I think, department. Yeah, so, oh, the, so we we're, we're combining that. those two positions that you had in the budget yeah. to one. Correct. For the to inspections. one over there. So we would take that and add. Oh, okay. So, right. Yeah. So both of those would kind of move into this. So um, Priscilla's position and this position would be combined. We'd have to add 14 to that to get a you know, a qualified mm -hmm. person okay. in that so department. Okay, so you're keeping this yep. here, you're combining yep. them. Combining them and plus adding the 14, 14 to get a grade four, four professional person in there to, okay. to handle all the boards. And then yep. you're taking the 17 and, and moving it three. Yeah, and adding that to the inspections. If, if we wanted to do that this year or, or maybe we We wait. can wait. Right, so that's I, I think the, I think, I think this, I think while we're transitioning, we can, we can wait on this Board of Health one. I want to wait on the Board of Health one. Okay. I think it's too much to add in an interim. Um, so we'll just have to make sure, you know, Dick is filling out all his stuff and doing all his yeah. clerical. Yeah, okay. right. And, and so what we're going to do but is by going to and again, we can, with the other position, that's th going to. Because we're going to full-time the position from that person. That person will be acquainted with the Board of Health activities. Right. right. And I think if we find that that's all right. To, like they're okay with handling everything. You know, maybe that that's sure it. But if if it's course. not enough time, right? Because one on. thing now that uh, we found is that the planning board and, and the ZBA doesn't have much activity, but planning board um, has a ton. They need support. Yep. Yep. Um, not only as as administrative support, but they also need planning professionals to support them. They're volunteers, right? Yes. And they don't necessarily have the uh, skills to understand complicated applications if right. one happened to come in. Yep. So I, I would be comfortable in hopefully helping out yep. myself, mm -hmm. but also having resources for them uh, for a consultant um, yep. in next year's budget to I think I to think going to full time and seeing what the workload is and then deciding what we need for the Board of Health. Well, and certainly, yeah, I agree. And then the, the um, you know, the money that we're adding to this, we're already spending, we were spending that on PAT. You know, we yes. had that money going to FERCOG all the time. So we- Well, so, okay, so the other, the other piece that Mike's mentioning is, and especially if you are not, if you're considering not adding a some Board of Health support because mm -hmm. that means that right. now we still have Pat doing a majority of that, so that takes the capacity. No, out. I say I say because we're moving, we're putting a full time person down there. Yeah. So we still move everything down there, and then we decide what we're going to do for next year. We'll for this know next, by December right. or whatever. I, yeah. I guess I just I, I feel that the um, I mean Mike and I can talk more about this, but the responsibilities of somebody to understand the building applications and the planning and the zoning and all of that. That's gonna be over and above the quality. And then to on for. top of that, expect them to understand the food service permit applications, the septic applications right. and yeah, all but of, Dick that does most of that stuff. Because well Pat is issuing you know, we do, we have to do um, inspections frequently. We do annual um, permits of some kind. So she has to issue like all of those things. So now you would be talking about this person who isn't currently doing that, all of that moving right. down there. I'm not saying it couldn't be, but right now um, it, that would just be a concern. So I think yep. some of it would stay here for now until we get, until we know well, for sure we that we can move that person up and running. Right. 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 So just right. as long as you understand that for yeah. your maybe own office. The, the, let's revisit this in in December as we're this is part our of budget. The, I was just going to sure. say this is part of acting, as changing the budget. the budget, this infrastructure right. of our Absolutely. offices. We're changing but I, I think it's too much to ask yeah. yes. um, in an interim. Mm -hmm. Budget requests when we don't even have the person because again, right? If the person is capable, then it won't be a problem. But we don't know how we don't know what the applicant pool is. So let's hold like. on to health. Yeah. Okay. So, I would, so I would say so, drop Article Eight. And so the other thing, just the so then Mike yeah. also mentioned the planner. So I did have yeah. I put the planning line because 
up until just this past year, you had been putting in $7,500, and you've been pay paying for a professional planner. You've actually right. had a contract for $15,000. Right. 7500 was coming from peer review, cut yep. from applicants, right. and seventy five dollars was coming from the town. So I, um, you know, I'm suggesting uh, we had an issue recently with John that he wasn't available for some time, and we had yep. a lot of uh, just some administrative um, confusion. We need... Since Pat Smith retired, we haven't been getting the planning board decisions written in a timely way. So um, in addition, we can't just expect that person to do all of that, too. Right. So there has to so be, to be some, some additional capacity. Um, from the front end stuff is doing the agendas and setting the scheduling and doing co collecting the applications, doing the fees, doing the turnovers. But on the back end, they need to write decisions. Those have to yes. be filed. They have right. to be recorded. They have to be distributed properly. And uh, since Pat left, not yeah, one single one, not one single decision has been done correctly. Yeah. I'm sorry to say I yeah. feel responsible. I don't we can't continue that. It's a liability to the community. Right. Well, yeah. we're already in court because of it. So So let's um So how much were you thinking the plan I mean we do 17 15 I'm now. saying put in the at least the 7500 for the planner services is what the town was appropriating mm -hmm. and then we were putting the 15 was com what contract you know some, some of, of it was, was coming, coming from, from the peer review. You, yes. Now I spoke with Peggy Sloan this week they are still trying to hire somebody. So in, yeah. so they don't have they don't a person have necessarily but she did say they were um, they were getting closer so she said if they had somebody they certainly would would you know, be able to help us. Um, but I okay. think just have, there are other planning consultants. I mean, certainly Chris Curtis worked for PVPC. Um, so if COG can't help, I mean, we could, we could look elsewhere, but we definitely need some professional planning support. And that's not a salary. That's a contract that was in the planning board budget. So it's under contract services? It was in the planning board, just under um, planning services, basically. Okay, so, okay. Yes. so Article 9 is 70, which now becomes Article 8. These have to be renumbered because mm -hmm. we're dropping Article 9, I mean 8. Right. So Article 9 is 8, Article mm -hmm. 10 is, is 9. 9, Article 11 is 10. Mm -hmm. um, and we have 7,500 for Article 8. <laughs> And we have Article so 7, right seven is 14,000. So you're all set then, right? You can I think so, yeah. I know what I want for Article 6. I know what I want for Article 7. No 8. Uh, no 8. 7,500 for, for 8. 75 for 8. Okay. Okay. Yep. So then we're all done. All right. Now you can. I, I, okay. We're uh, adjourned. If you don't. Yeah, yeah no. can, can make a motion to adjourn and we can pick up this um, discussion. I actually would like you to vote to sign. I need you to sign the warrant. I understand we're going to make some changes to this and we can do that and post it by Friday, but I okay. have a signature page and oh, I just. Oh, yeah. that's fine. Want I can do that and then we'll fill those motions in. Yes, right. you can so tell I make me a motion, what that is. I make a motion to sign the uh, warrant for special town meeting, uh, which will take place on September, September 30th. 30th. Thank you. We have um, regular have select board. Second. All those in favor? Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, we have a, a regular select board meeting on um, um, September 25th. We're going to have information on this um, at 6 o'clock. We have the special town meeting at, on the 30th. And we have a hazardous mitigation um, MVP and complete streets on October 2nd. So, motion to adjourn. Second. Um, I'll make that motion and second it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.